Praise to the man who communed with Jehovah, Jesus anointed and prophet and say. Saints, chapter 6. In this episode of Three Mormons, we review the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints' newest installment of the Saints series. It's really funny to watch you from this angle because you're like moving and your shoulders move. Wait, I but they don't. It. But they don't get it. They just get the I was just so bored. On. We do it again. We focus. <laughs> okay. Actually, how about we just talk about the chapter? <laughs> yeah, let's get <be> done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So we left off. Where did we leave I off? I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's like the kids a show. Recap. We left, we left. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. We last left our hero. We, we last left our to hero to translate. So I didn't, I didn't know this, but here's a cool part of this book, the thing that happened in life, which is written in the book that I'm talking about here. About, about Mormons. The book. Yeah. The, uh, the book about Mormons yeah. who made the book of Mormon. Ah! <laughs> so, uh, so after Joseph Smith lost the ability to translate, he was really, you know, he was he was kind of sad. He was stressed. He had anxiety about it. You know, he, he had seen these amazing miracles, and now it was taken away from him. Not only was his translation ability taken away from him, but the plates and the Urim and Thummim were too. So he was just empty-handed. So imagine you you failed like your final, like you failed the class. Yeah. And then your laptop was also taken away, and all of your papers, pencils, you have nothing to learn or get better. You're just done. You failed forever. That's not exactly what happened. That but. wouldn't depress me, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take my papers away? <laughs> okay. yeah. um, take so, away my ability to progress and learn. Uh, so he's walking home one day, and Moroni appears to him. Um, and he was probably very, very happy to see Moroni. Or he was like, oh, are you mad at me? <laughs> I don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But Moroni hands him the interpreters, or the Urim and Thummim, and says, the works and designs and the purposes of God cannot be frustrated, neither can they come to naught. How strict were your commandments? You should have not feared man more than God. He gave them back. Um, so I think this taught Joseph a lesson, you know, who's really in charge? God is in charge. It doesn't matter what man is going to do. You follow what God has said. It kind of, kind of reminds me of when Spider-Man lost his suit because he was using it inappropriately. And then, and then he, was, he proved himself he was righteous without his suit. And then he got it back. Is was that, that when, based off of this? Is that when Tobey Maguire is like oh. snapping, walking down the street? No, with no, that, like, that's a Oh, that's when he's bad, right? That's, 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 yeah. that's, that movie didn't exist. No, Spider-Man Homecoming. I think Anyways. that's the only one I've seen. Homecoming. That's the newer one. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. It's not about the homecoming dance. Okay. But uh, in addition to having losing losing like the ability to translate and everything, um, Joseph had also gone through some extreme personal hardships. Mm -hmm. um, that that him him and Emma had lost their first child, and mm -hmm. and that so that was just like it, it, th that time was just very dark for yeah. him. And then on top of that, he was accused of Martin Harris's wife of being a fraud because because of what happened with the plates and then being lost, and then she's just like, you know, I think personally that she was just fed up with Martin Harris being so involved in Joseph mm -hmm. and the he church. He was contributing money and yeah. a lot of his time into helping the and translation. And so I don't know what her motivations were, but she was just really mad that all of this was happening. So she's like, Joseph's a fraud. And so Martin Harris is like, hey, Joseph, if you just prove to the court that the plates are real, then we'll be acquitted and it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And Joseph's like, that's not gonna happen, you know? Like, we've already been through this. And then he receives a revelation for Martin Harris being that you need to humble yourself, you know, and not fear, like, once again, like, stop fearing man. So Martin Harris, and this is what's crazy, is he goes to court, and and Joseph doesn't even go to court. Martin Harris goes and speaks against his own wife. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine, like, walking to that courtroom, like, there's your wife, and she's the one, like, trying to condemn, you know, you and your religion, and you come in, and you're like... I know Joseph Smith is a prophet. I know this is true. And she's just sitting there just like... I'd be so mad. Like, hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, isn't that the lady, like, you share a house yeah, with? Yeah, exactly. your wife? I doubt... I'm sure he slept on the couch or worse, you know? Because, <laughs> like, seriously, like, what... what? And can you imagine coming home after that? Like... Oh. It gives a new, it gives a so new way to think about the term follow the prophet, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, literally. Mm -hmm. it, and so I think it, it's, it's also good, though, to show that there's an example of people who have given up even family relationships mm -hmm. for the truth, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know why his wife was so against it. Um, but the work then, then started to continue, started mm -hmm. to, like pick up after that, after they'd both been, their faith was tried, 
and then they're ready to get back to work. Yes, and so at this point, Emma is no longer the scribe and neither is Martin Harris. And Joseph Smith knows that the Lord will provide a new scribe to help him with the translation of the Book of Mormon. And while this is happening, Joseph doesn't know this, but there is a man <laughs> named Oliver Cowdery, who is a school teacher near Palmyra where Joseph's family lives. And while he was a school teacher, a lot of the time they like live with a nearby family because he was from somewhere. I don't not know. He was from today. out of town. <laughs> Yeah, that would not be a thing now. Um, But Oliver is very intrigued with Joseph's story with translating the Book of Mormon. But at first, the Smith family is a little bit reserved. But they open up with each other and Oliver wants to help. He learns about the translation and he just feels like he prayed about it because Oliver was also a very religious person, but he didn't know if there was a true church out there. So he was in the same boat as Joseph Smith and he starts praying about it and he gets an answer that what Joseph Smith is doing is true and right and he was going to go help. So him and Joseph's younger brother, Samuel, walked over 100 miles. And I would walk 100, 100 miles. And I know that's a song, but who does that? Like, seriously, more. like, how far is that the from man place to, to translate place? The, the salt, get, to Salt Lake's like, what, 40? Salt Lake to Provo? 56. It, it, it's a long time to walk. It's, it's a, a long time to walk. We'll say, walk. We'll say how. And Oliver did it. And so it's, I just think it's so cool because Joseph just had the faith. Like he didn't go out looking like who's going to be my new scribe. He just has faith that Heavenly Father is going to deliver a person to him. Yeah, and like right. it happens. It's uh, so I cool. Love, dude, Oliver so, Cowdery. I love Oliver Cowdery so too. much. So cool. He is one of my favorite people in this whole, um, in this whole story. So at this point, Oliver joins Joseph and he begins to be the scribe for him. Things are going well. And at some point during the translation process, Oliver, decides that he wants to be the one to translate and so they pray about it and Heavenly Father said yes Oliver can translate and so Oliver goes out to try but for some reason he's having a really hard time with it he's getting frustrated and he's not able to translate it's just not coming to him and so they pray about it again and Heavenly Father is like Oliver you weren't like putting in the work into it and so I guess Oliver had this realization like oh my gosh like it's not just sitting there like looking at the seer stone and like having it come to you but (laughs) that's how I imagine him just sitting there just like (laughs) like getting super mad and then Heavenly Father's just like that's not how it works (laughs) so this is actually where we get the very well-known verse that first you need to study it out in your mind and then Heavenly Father will give you the answers. It's not just going into things and expecting everything to be done for you and Heavenly Father to give you everything, but you need to put in your part too. So we learn some valuable lessons. I really like the Doctrine and Covenants because we're able to learn from real Mm -hmm. people and their real mistakes. And so I'm very grateful for that verse and just know that if you're trying to seek for answers or if you're trying to get help from Heavenly Father, just remember that you can't expect it all just to come to you, but you need to put in some work too. Amen. You know, when I die, <laughs> like, the people I want to meet first, God, right? God the Father, uh-huh. Jesus Christ, Heavenly Mother. Uh-huh. But I honestly, like, I know I should meet all my ancestors and stuff first, but, like, I really want to meet Oliver Cowdery. Oh, like, true. I might run right past Joseph and go straight to <laughs> Oliver Cowdery. Oh, well, I would have. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for checking this out. Make sure to be following the Saints books. Read Saints Chapter 7. And you know what, guys? Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified when videos come up. Also, Justin is single, so slide into his DMs. So ask him on a date. I am also single, hey, but I don't need anyone else in my DMs. So unless wow. I think, I think. <gasps> joking. <laughs> I think. I'm kidding. I'm going to go. Hey, look, look, look. I'm married. Suck it. It's a joke. It's comedy. I love when you guys message me. I do. I love it.